Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. And five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's Thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She's that chick angel. Welcome to another podcast Ranger, episode. Ranger, smash Ranger, that Ranger. like button. Smash Ranger. that notification Ranger. button. Bangers on 2023. Bangers, bangers, bangers. Just for you and me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> welcome to the Here's the Thing podcast. My name is Kevin. She's Angel. He's Joshua. Yeah. Robert Gonzalez, JRG, you feel me? JRG. Angel, what you got in your life? You have any church announcements? Church, church announcements. What do I have? Stream all the goddamn on remixes of One Margarita. Stream them. Okay? We got the the ones for the Spanish people, or don't speak Spanish. Snow, the product, just be rapping her goddamn on face off. Or if, if you want a, a ladies remix, Got a ladies remix with Fendi the rapper with se- sexy red in Flo Millie. And then if you just want to be saucy with it, I got one with Saucy Santana. Or just listen to me. Shoot. Go ahead. Y'all get it. Uh, the U.S. leg of the Ball Brothers tour is over. Shout out to Man. all of y'all. You were great. Um, Shout out. We will be back in like six weeks. Berlin, London, and Paris. Uh, the last three shows. Um, that's all. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors as I put on my eyeliner for today's episode. They're Chime, Ritual, Indeed, and Acorns. I'll tell you more about them later in the show. Angel, first things first. Yes. Well. I did that shit. That's you, the first thing of the first, but yeah. go ahead. Uh, I want to talk about Beyonce real fast. I don't know how it's going to be fast. We were at her concert last night. All of us. Me, Angel, Joshy, Liss, Mel, Greg. Beyonce, uh, the Kardashians, Danielle Pinnock, Brisha's Webb. Justin Bieber not walking close to Haley Bieber. Yep. Tab, Choice. Tom Holland, Zendaya. Kim Kardashian, Liz Blue Ivy Carter. Let me say. Probably a guy named Reggie. When people kept, I, first of all. <laughs> I think there was a, a Reynolds there too. I was right beside Kendall and Kylie at one point in time during the concert. Like literally, like I was like, where is y'all security? Because I'm looking them in their face. I'm like this. Really? Yes. I was like, excuse me, I'm just trying to get to my seat. They I were mean, in your way? Yeah, they were in my way, but I was trying to figure out why. I was why saying, are you in the I world mean, right like, here? What if I would have punched you? I could have. <laughs> and they went down. <laughs> I mean, I don't care about them in that way, so there was no fangirl moment. But I was like. What you doing over here? Y'all worth a lot of money, apparently. Mm-hmm. Why are y'all just out here like this? Because Beyonce created a safe space for them. Listen. Uh, I just want to say, as a creative person myself, Beyonce inspired me in two ways. One, she, I, I, I kind of was pissed off when Andrew Schultz was trying to compare Taylor Swift to Beyonce. He did that on she's purpose because that's an idiot. He's a troll idiot. now. Yeah, man. he's that's trolling. Whole thing. He's big time trolling. And it wasn't as obvious. Like, that wasn't a serious thing to me. But Beyonce is the biggest and best performer performing right now. And she... She, this version of her is a little toned down. It's, it's uh, a lot of visuals. It's Jordan back to the basket now, mm-hmm. right? Last three championships. Mm-hmm. The other tour, she was, she was dancing, dancing. Still getting rings though. She getting rings. Mm-hmm. It's 42, but she was like, I'm going to do less dancing, but I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing and like, y'all don't even know. Also, I'm my own opening act and I'm coming out for two and a half, almost three hours oh, straight. Yeah. Just me. Nobody before. Some people in the middle, but just me. And then also... Uh, we were just saying this before we started. The, Kendrick Lamar was surprised and Diana Ross. Also, Diana Ross coming out to your show is like, that's crazy. I wept. You cried? I saw you cry. I cried the whole show. But <laughs> I'm going you? to that after okay. you finish your stuff. Uh, but then their mic was off. And I was like, dang, with all the money in the world, not all the money in the world, but enough money to have the best the audio biggest tech platform. and equipment, biggest platform, there's still mistakes. And sometimes I'll be like, man, if we just had money, things would go right. Uh, sometimes things just go wrong, especially mm-hmm. in production and especially even more in live production. And guess what? Beyonce kept dancing. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar came up. That mic was off. He rap, he rap. Mike came on. He went right back down. The problem is they she, can still hear themselves in the in, in the, the monitors. Yeah. So they can't oh, so hear what's actually a, coming out. He's just hearing the back line, the click. Oh, that's, that's a good point. So that's why he doesn't stop. So, yeah, Angel, as a black woman, mother, rapper, performer yourself. Period. So here's the thing. That was my second time seeing this specific tour. Mm -hmm. I am now, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, convinced 
that she is physically healing from something because yeah. she looked completely different in Kentucky. In Kentucky, she did less. Really? Yes. And I was just like, huh, I'll take it because you're singing down and I know what you're capable of. So yeah. I don't have to see it right now. She emptied yeah. the tank last night. Yes. She gave way more than she did in Kentucky. I said, oh, okay. This is why I'm not getting Beyonce from 10 years ago as far as in dancing. And even if she just decided she didn't want to because she's a 42 year old, you know, megastar, she can do whatever the hell she wants to do. I cried from <laughs> start through the finish. Why were you crying? You know, so many reasons, guys. <laughs> One, I think it being her birthday, it really made me, like, grasp this whole thing of, you know, we're middle-aged women now. Like, and to still be putting yourself out there in a way that is just, like, most people your age can't do, and to still be like, I'm that chick. I just Patrick Beyonce. Yeah, 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 <laughs> pretty much. You, okay, here's the thing. There are people, and I find it strange, but I don't deflect it. They'll be like, Angel, you are showing me that it doesn't matter what my age is. I can still go after what I want. Mm -hmm. Right? That always seems odd to me because I'm like, I'm a fool. But thank you for seeing that in me. <laughs> she is the personification of that. She is like kind of my North Star. I'm not trying to be Beyonce, but watching her being a mother of twins. Great. She's got so many more resources, so her life looks different than mine. Yeah. But when you talk about representation mattering, she's she's there. Right there for me to see. She and is. I've been there since 97. When she said, those of y'all who have been fans since 97, I am not new to this woman. I've been a fan since the remix of No, 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 No. This is the re that's the That's the song I remember. Yeah, because the, well, the, I the, the original wasn't, wasn't getting radio play like that. Yeah. But as soon as that hit, I was like, who are these people and who is that woman specifically? I remember walking down the street. I was living in Fayetteville at the time, Bougainville. Um, and that song was playing on somebody's car radio. And I was like, hmm, I like this. Mm -hmm. And that was what well, I was probably, you said it was 97? So I was, what, 14? Yeah, I was 16. I was on JoJo's age. That's crazy. I wasn't even 17 yet. Yeah. But and then anyway. I was like, what's their next song? And uh, they finally dropped Bills, Bills, Bills. I said, this is all I want in life. <laughs> so anyway, I cried. Uh, yes, and I was crying to upbeat songs too. There you go. You know the fast song going to get you every time. When Blue came out there, I was sobbing. I'm sure when I finally watch my video, you're going to hear, Ooh! I mean, I was sobbing so loud. <laughs> that little baby dancing did my heart glad. Right? I love nepotism. <laughs> and that, oh, yeah. like, can you imagine? First of all, kind of, like, I was remembering people were like, Blue Ivy ain't dancing good. Very few people, adults, could even perform in front of a hundred people. A hundred people. Right. Most people have a uh, fear of public speaking. Is, is a huge fear. Yeah. I performed for, the most I ever performed for was like 10,000 people, 12,000 people at the Staples Center, 17,000 people, I think it was, uh, for like three seconds as the Playmakers. Uh, Blue Ivy was in front of 72,000, I believe, so far holds. Give or take, because the way- 70,000 people, and she's like 13, 14, 11? 11. She's 11? She's 11. She don't turn 12 until top of the year. Oh, she got taller. She's extremely tall. And she did Little her. Girl. And also, Beyonce, now listen, she don't turn it on a lot, but she snapped in a few and like, let me show y'all. I can. It's like watching Jordan dunk when he was in his older age. Like, I still get up. Don't don't jump with me. Hey, hey, hey on your head. Pretty much. I cried during that part <laughs> because I was like, she has found a way to be a mother and a megastar all at the same moment at the same time, seamlessly. That is the dream for me. I ain't got to be a megastar, but let me find a way to do my artistry and be a mama. I mean, and a mama mama. Beyonce wasn't being a kind of mama. She looked at her baby. She said, God dang right. The legendary Blue Ivy. To, to give your yeah, baby imagine that Beyonce much. Beyonce hyping you up and calling you legendary and your mom is Beyonce, who's arguably the greatest living entertainer. You know what it is? Then that's what you are. That is. That is what you are. You are. Like, you couldn't tell me nothing if my mom was Beyonce and be like, kill it. Nigga, little... shut the fuck up is what you say would her, get from me. <laughs> you could do it too. We say it together. <laughs> that would be me. Like, 
That girl, not to say that she needs the validation of the fans, but her mother is giving that girl the opportunity to feel yeah. that much love at a young age. Yes. Girl gonna be able to do whatever. And also, she doesn't have to do anything. She doesn't want to because her parents are filthy rich. So, Beyonce's great. Angel, tell us about Pride Fest. Oh, my First of God. all, when I saw your video, you are a black mom even when you're rapping. Yes, I do. You were rapping. Come on, y'all. Sing it out. <laughs> I said you is somebody's doggone mama on that stage. I said to Brisha, <laughs> I said, I've got to... I, Yell like a preacher you to yell the audience. Like somebody's mother. Let me hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Give them praise. That's what well, I sounded sound like. Sound like you said. Yeah, I said. I, oh. said, I wish I was there the because <laughs> I would have given you an offering. You was somebody's minister. Hey, come on, sing yes. it, y'all. I said you somebody's dog on mama. Not only that, at one point in time, I guess I must have felt like something was going to fall off of me because my shoulder was up when I was doing my oh, verse. No. Like I was like I was like rapping, like like my shoulder was up when I was rapping, right? And I was like sixty two. That's what that is. <laughs> I, said, I have never. When I was at the club the night before, that's not what I looked like. I said, "Why is my shoulder up? Like it's I'm going?" I'm surprised you didn't do that, Pastor Sarah. That's I was that. It felt like Give I was that close. Margarita, Margarita. Oh, 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 come on, put your hands together if you're finding you. worthy. Hey, Margarita, hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, so first of all, let's start off with I'm gonna make this quick so we can get to the topics. No, I'm not. Right. We're, I'm gonna take whatever time take I want to take. Time, Angel. Hey, Amen. So I really felt like a rapper because on um, Saturday I had to perform at the club, right? Walk through. So, but I had for the first time I hired my own security because I found out we were gonna be in the hood. I, I said, I, I, who who said? Listen, which I, of your friends recommended? You did. Okay. Well, you and uh, multiple. Right. So I had a great security. But just me though. You 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 yes you. <laughs> and originally they would say they told me I need to be at the club from eleven to one. The guy who was my liaison, he was like, do not show up at that club at eleven. He was like, get there at like twelve forty five. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna go to the strip club first because mm. that I, that feels more rappery, right? So we went to Blue Flame, which is a smaller strip oh, club. Oh. Yeah. Support the local businesses? Yes. Small business owners? Yes. These women's bodies, first of all, looked untampered with. These look like I just grew up like this. So if they've had work done, please tell me who your surgeon is. <laughs> and they were just walking around naked, you know, just, just walking around naked. Hoochie air in the building. Oh, man. Booty cheeks. It, it didn't stink in there. The ladies were gorgeous. They And it's so funny that just the facial expressions when they dancing is just like, weird but uh we gave a little love offering to of one woman because i was just like your body the way it is Some deserves money yeah yeah this one man was like make her work for it i said nigga she's on stage she naked. Worked. <laughs> she's at work she's at work now what else does she need to do he was like it's about the experience you should make no <laughs> she damn it. already worked for her. the fact that she has the body she has now her work was done before right I, there's a lot of snacks she didn't eat that i eat <laughs> And on that, here is some money. I just saw her butt. Her, what else do she need to do? I love Angel being like, you know what? Here you go. I did. I just admire what you've done. Listen, Amen. <laughs> I took my best friend because she was God. really like, ooh, ass and titties for my birthday would be great. She gave money and didn't even like make. I was like, she got to see that you're giving money. The girl's back was to it. She was like, <laughs> I said, this. <laughs> I said, you are dumb. All the strippers knew my security guard. I said, well, I, do you frequent here, sir? <laughs> he, were, su he supports local businesses. Yeah, they were like, hey, but they were happy to see him. So I was yeah. like, at least I know you're not a womanizer because they yeah. wouldn't be happy to see you. Then we went over to the club. They had on the my dressing room door, my green room, that girl. <laughs> That's Gonna it? definitely post that. Th that's it. Yeah, not Did that he? chick angel. It Just was like it, you could. T it was like a like the official sign for the green room. Print it so out. Saucy Santana had his own green room. I had mine, and it said that girl. I said, "Well, look at how look at how I made it. Look at how I made it." Uh, and then uh, I had my own little uh, VIP section. <laughs> the girl came out. She was like, "What type of bottle you want?" And I was like, "Well, we're gonna do tequila." I was like, Casamigos and Nejo. And then she was like, yeah, that'll be 352. I said, ma'am, I am performing. 
tonight. Here, talk to somebody. Hey, talk to somebody. Hey, I'm not paying for this bottle. Pebbles? Where, where is <laughs> where Pebbles? Is get, get, <laughs> tell Pebbles she can borrow the ride for and, and come get me. Um, but real quick, do y'all have a summer anthem? Okay, well, wait, Margarita's wait. mine. Oh, okay. Well, I here's how about this one? Okay, summer, summer, summer time. Yeah, I'm singing the wrong song. I'm singing the wrong song. Let's try it again. Or how about this? <laughs> Summertime <laughs> and building credit is easy. That's the song they have in this ad read. My bad. I was back in rapper mode. Let me get to my jazzy self. Well, that's the song you'll be singing all summer long <laughs> with the secure chime credit builder visa credit card. A better way to build credit. As in, you can build your credit <laughs> score safely with everyday purchases on and on time payments. Plus, there's no annual fee, interest, or credit check to get started. No annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply. Use it everywhere. Visa credit cards are accepted. Build credit using your own money. Let me tell you, it's super duper easy, simple, because like they said, you're basically using your own money. So it's not something that you kind of have to get used to doing because you already do it right now, but you're doing it in a way that doesn't help build your credit. But you can with Chime. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Fee-free overdraft with SpotMe. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for SpotMe, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. Ditch the monthly fees. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. Access 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. And that is the God honest truth. Easily find one near you with the Chime app. Send and receive money. Pay friends through Chime, no matter what bank they u- bank account they use. And cash out your money fee-free. Start building your credit up. Open a Chime ch- checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash SK. SK. That's Chime.com slash SK. SK. Mandatory disclosures. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC, Chime checking account, and 200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. So, um, in the club, they were- yeah, and uh, they got they finally brought me my bottle. The little bottle girls came out with sparklers. Ooh, hey, hey, boop, boop. Uh, and then <laughs> I thought I was supposed to rap at 1 a.m. So I was ready. They were like, oh, we no. want the club to be more packed before we have you go. I said, okay. 1.30 rolls around. Is it packed enough? No, we want more people here. It looked packed to me, okay? <laughs> the niggas was twerking. They were having a good time. <laughs> Two o'clock rolls around. Oh, my God. <laughs> they said, okay, Angel, we're going to have this young lady open for you. Okay? Shunna Red. Shout out to her. I was like, oh, I can open for her. <laughs> I am okay with opening for her. And I was like, where are my performance? They were like, from your VIP section. We're going to spotlight you. I said, okay. And then finally they played it. I was like, oh, God. They, she did a couple of songs. I finally got to do my song. I was like, great. Can I go now? <laughs> right? I was like, let me pay for these chicken wings. My God, my girlfriend, a hookah. And then they were like, Saucy Santana's here. And I was like, okay, well, I got to say hi to Saucy. All got right. to say hi to Saucy. So I had to figure that out because, you know, there's a whole, you know, somebody should take you over there. I ain't got time for that. Okay. I went up to a security guard who I knew. I said, hey, how you doing, baby? He was like, <laughs> now, why are you talking hey, like this? Because it's 2 30. That's club, why. Man. Listen, let me give you a word that's original from my yes, purse. Yes. How you doing, young man? Let how me speak doing? with uh, sa- Saucy. I said, can I say hi to him? He said, let me make sure he's right. I said, fine, because Saucy had been twerking on the couch, right? <laughs> so Saucy was trying to, you know, cool down. Saucy looked down and saw me. He said, Angel. He said, girl, you look good. I said, thank you. He said, you performing tonight? I said, I already did. He said, well, we can do the song again since I'm here. Let's do it. And I was like, please. I said, Saucy, you know I'm old, right? <laughs> I said to his face. Please, Saucy, don't, don't torture <laughs> said, me like this. I said, what time are you going on? 
He said, well, I just got here, so I'm trying to get drunk first. I said, okay, <laughs> where's your manager so I can find out? I said, because if it's not too long from now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn down performing with a bigger artist if they are going to be gracious enough to share their time with yeah. me. Yeah. So I went over to Toys, his manager. I said, no, Toys, I'm old. When is when is Saucy looking over on? these glasses is really <laughs> helping the visual for how you are talking in a that's club. How I, that's how I felt. I said, "Now nah, I'm old now." <laughs> when is she said, "I'm a, I'm a text your assistant. I'm gonna find out." And she they were like, "He gonna do one of his songs and he gonna do your song." Saucy was nice enough to do my song first. I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, "We could just do your verse in my head," and that's what we did. I did the intro, one margarita, two margarita. Then he did his thing, and I was like, oh, "Yeah, cut it off." <laughs> Cut it off, damn it. So I didn't get back to my hotel room until 4 a.m. Ah! <laughs> yes. 4 a.m. And wait, this was Sunday? This is Saturday, going, I mean? We're now going into Sunday morning. It's oh, 4 Saturday night. Yeah, so it's now 4 a.m. on Sunday. And you performed also at the Piedmont on yeah, Sunday. Not only that, I had rehearsals with my dancers that morning. What time was that? So I went to bed at 4, rehearsal with dancers at 11. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the I rap start. life. I was gonna say that's that's a full artist life, ain't that's it? That's the rap life. Let me tell you, I said, Lord, but I looked cute at the club, but my shorts kept going in my butt. Luckily, it was a gay club. I didn't have to worry about it because my cheeks was out. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, my best friend caught it because she was filming. I wasn't even paying attention. I'm digging my wedgies out with my back to the audience. <laughs> like, literally, I. This camera is the. The audience. I'm literally like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, yeah, it was too late for me to know what was happening. <laughs> Every bit of 40 years old. <laughs> she said, oh, you dug in your ass in front of everybody. I said, wait a minute. The audience is this direction. She said, yes, bitch. <laughs> yes. You were digging in your ass in front of everybody. Cause then my butt was eating them short. I was, I was cheeks out. Oh man. I mean, I looked like a rapper. It looked right, yeah. but it wasn't what I was trying to give. What, why did you not know the audience was that way? It was almost what, 4 a.m. Kevin. Where were you facing before? I was facing, there was a whole entourage. So I was like, let me turn my back on the entourage to get my butt together. I'll show you. Don't worry, you four people. <laughs> 400 people, you'll now <laughs> right. see what I was, I, I'll sacrifice the few so that the many can see. I'm talking about, did really, and didn't even dig it all the way out. Still three inches of the shorts was in my tail. My ass was like, we eating these things today. <laughs> and then uh, the next day I uh, uh, performed, I was a little thrown off because somebody was supposed to go ahead of me. And they were like, one artist is before you. And I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Then all of a sudden, I'm hearing them talk about me on stage. And I was thinking, this is really rude. They should be talking about the woman coming up. Like, they, they need to give her her time. Yeah. Like, don't talk about me yet. And then I hear, there's a woman in front of me. She's like, what's the name of your track? Who did you email it to? And I'm like, wait, what, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> And I hit that chick, hey, Joe. I don't have a mic yet. They didn't start the music. I said, no, okay, I was about to be 85. What we not about to do is play with me today. You just start it over. Count me in. Five and a two and a five, six. Give me one <laughs> margarita. Give me two margarita. Oh, give me three margarita in this club. In the Give me four margaritas. Give me five margaritas. Give me one margarita in this club. <laughs> but the live performance went great. It looked like I had actually prepared, which I had. Uh, what I put together with that little bitty budget, I am still amazed by. That the, the you talking about the actual Piedmont? Yeah. From um, what I saw, let me tell you what you had: three dancers, four, four dancers, one one man, two men, two men. Uh -huh, the two man guys. on the left, thought he was gonna pop his neck off <laughs> when he did the neck thing. Uh -huh. His neck, I said, he giving you every dime you paid him. They were dancing like the rent was due, what? and I was paying that rent to them. Okay. They Personally, dance. you paying my rent and I'm going to show you you're worthy. Yeah, they they gave me what I needed. So shout out to Kimani Cameron. 
Winter in Vilmari, a.k.a. V. They were my first background dancers that I personally got to cast and hire, and then babies danced their ass off they for me. They did. I was so proud. Thank I was you. like, this is just, this is crazy. It, That's what I was, I was literally like, this is crazy. And there was thousands of people out there. I know down to the Piedmont. I said, oh, there's a lot of you niggas out here. Okay. Piedmont Park is big. I'm just mad that I had that shoulder up. If I could have figured out a way to get that thing down, it would have been a perfect show. But anyways, thank you to everybody who came out. Thank you to um, Sylvain uh, uh, Optometry for giving me these dope. Oh, you're getting stuff? Uh, uh, yeah, she gave some to Melissa too. Yves Saint Laurent glasses uh i love them i'm gonna be wearing them because i'm a rapper no that's great no you're talking to the mic i like it oh they can't hear you but they could hear you yeah talk about your starbucks order more sorry yeah i like it sorry no. <laughs> um but yeah no i am excited i have an interview with um i'm doing an interview with uh well that's gone <laughs> Where did it go? We it's a get fun it. one. We it's need to a get fun in the one. studio, Angel. Uh, listen. Unruly I, Cousins EP. Hey, hey. I get did, some beats, Josh. I did feel like a rapper, though. I'm, a, I'm not What do you mean feel like, Angel? You are. I am. I am. You're 12 million, 13 million. Thank you, sir. Uh, streams. I, I got a lot. I got a, What's that one with the yellow background that everybody do, Josh? The interview that everybody do is yellow background. They talk about Genius. That Genius. Oh, yep. are you doing it with uh, Andres? The do, uh, I don't know who's oh, going to be okay. there, but I'm doing it tomorrow. So What's fun. Time? Are you doing what? the genius, that that thing? Or are you just interviewing with genius? That thing. You're going to need to break down the lyrics? Yeah. Like, this I kind of want to go because I know the producer. Come. I'm, I might. One o'clock. So cool. Yeah. So good times. I'm grown. This is great. Okay. All right, the the Patreon, by and large, wanted to have that update. And also your friends, Kevin and Josh, wanted to hear that update. Thank you. Thank you, Angel, so, for sharing. So, the reason we titled this episode, Beware the Tabby Swiper, is because over the weekend, a very funny story happened. Um, to be honest, I didn't know what tabbies were before this story. Uh, apparently, they're shoes for cows that women also wear, because the hoof is already built in. If you're not aware, here is the story from the horse's mouth. Tabbies, um, that my father. Ladies of NYC, be fucking aware. This man is out here on Tinder and Hinge, and he will steal from you. So this is a story about how that fucker stole my Mary Jane Tabbies um, that my father bought for me as a birthday gift. Okay, so how it all happened. So I'm walking around Soho, and I see this really cute guy, and we cross paths. We just lock eyes, and that's really it. Fast forward in the evening, I get a message on Tinder, and it's from the guy, and he's like, hey, did I see you downtown? I didn't know we matched on Tinder before, but guess we did. We start chatting, and then we ended up going out for drinks. We get drinks, and everything seems, like, cool, and, like, he seems like a nice guy and, like, someone I would just probably just hang out with for, like, a little fling and just, like, sleep with. After the day, he's pretty persistent about, like, seeing me again and hanging out. Okay, fast forward, we hang out again, he comes over, and we sleep together. Before we sleep together, we're, like, chatting about, like, fashion and stuff, and he's, like, really wants tabbies, and, like, he, I'm, like, oh, yeah, I have some tabbies, and, like, he's, like, oh, I really want the boots. Okay, so then fast forward to the morning, we have sex again. Then I get up, I go and I brush my teeth, I come back, he's putting his clothes on, and we chat a little bit more. So now we're chatting, and he's, like, oh, can I show you this playlist on Spotify? I feel like you really like it, and I'm, like, okay, sure. Um, he doesn't have Spotify, we've already discussed this, so he, um, I give him my phone to go on Spotify to look it up. I open my phone and everything for him. I give him the app to Spotify. He looks it up. So then he gives me back my phone. He's like, I can't find the playlist. I'm just like, okay, it's time to go. And he's like, I'm going to head out. And I'm like, bye. And he's like, okay, like text me. And I'm like, okay, bye. The hours pass. I'm on my computer. I look over to my shoe rack over here. I have tabby boots up there. We were talking about the tabby boots, and he was, like, referencing those. He barely glanced at the, the Mary Janes, okay? I look over there, and they're gone. And I'm like, where are my tabbies? So I look, I do like, high and low, look under my bed, look at my suitcase, look at my closet, can't find them anywhere. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to be accusatory. I'm just going to see if he knows where I put them. I go to Tinder to message him, unmatched, gone. I'm like, oh, no, this bitch stole my fucking shoes. So I go, it's fine. We talked on the phone. I'm just going to go um, to my call log and find his number. I go to the call log, and he literally deleted the history of the call. 
so I can't find his number. And I'm like, so when you were on Spotify, you were actually deleting my your it's phone number from my phone. <laughs> More of the story is don't fuck with this fucker named Joshua on Tinder. He's a dickhead. Oh, and if hey, you man, know chill, who he is, where yeah. he lives, or anything yeah. about him, fucking let me know because I deserve retribution and I want my fucking shoes back. So... <clears throat> Angel, I'd like to hear from you. As a, you, you haven't heard. You don't want to play the second part of the story. You know, there's a second part. Oh, when she got him back. Yeah, that's important. Hold on. Okay, so I woke up this morning to the video getting even crazier, and now there's memes. It's on Twitter and everywhere. But update: I got my tabbies back. So. Yeah, I ended up getting them back, and I'll tell you guys exactly how. So after, like, oh, finally finding him, he privated his Instagram. <laughs> I couldn't really Girl. communicate with him through Beat that. Um, I, like, reached out to his sister. I reached out to, like, a bunch of people because people were giving me a bunch of information about him. So I was just trying to get in contact with him. Um, he finally calls me two hours later after he privated his account and starts to gaslight me and tell me that, um, he didn't steal them, and he doesn't know how it happened and what happened, and he's like, that's just out of my character. I would never do that. And, like, I started feeling crazy because I'm like, you're real. he's, this man is a psychopath. Um, he was trying to convince me that he didn't steal it. I'm like, how, then tell me how, what happened. Um, and then he went into saying that he would give me money for it, and that's when I knew he was fucking lying because he was like, I'll, you, I can give you $500. You know what I do for a living. You, like, I'll give you $1,000. And I'm just like, oh, when you're offering money, that means you did it. Like, an innocent person would not give $1,000 if they did not do it. So then the plot thickens, find out he has a girlfriend, and then he gave my tabbies to his girlfriend. <laughs> um, you I sent him a screenshot of his you girlfriend wearing love. my tabbies. And he's like, and hours later at 3 a.m., I get a text message, and he's like, I, you caught me. Um, I'll give you back your shoes. Ah, uh, you uh, yeah, So this is him again, gaslighting me, being like, I didn't do anything. Then I send him this, and then hours later, he's like, got me. That's his girlfriend wearing my shoes, by the way. Aww. And like, he thinks this shit is a fucking joke. This is another message he sent to me after. He was literally smiling like the whole fucking time. He said in the text, I thought I could get away with it. You meddling kids, if it wasn't for well, you, you, meddling, gonna, you meddling TikTok. I would have gotten God. away with it. First off, let's start with the fact that those shoes are ugly. You just don't have fashion sense. I don't. The, the, first of all, let me tell you why you're wrong. Minotaurs have been killing these. Okay. Uh, so. They look like hooves or swollen coochie lips. <laughs> Regardless, I don't want them on my fucking feet. He did you a favor, sis. Get those shits out of here. They are ugly. Second of all, <laughs> I that was a bitch ass move. <laughs> So I thought she was going to say she saw a picture of him wearing the shoes I'm with impressed. the with the heels busted out. I just thought like to be that much of a jerk to date a woman to have sex with her and be like let me steal them shoes for the the woman of my life. I you, I would have respected him more had they been for him. Then I'd be like, "Oh, you just an ass, but you're a cheater." <laughs> And an ass. And a thief. Yes, and a thief. <laughs> no crime he won't do. <laughs> and then uh, the double down a lot. That doesn't even sound like my character. Actually, it sounds just like you. You jerk. You stole my ugly shoes. <laughs> I just looked it up. These ugly shoes be costing darn near a thousand. They cost a thousand dollars. I've got a couple of pair of ugly shoes. None as ugly as this. And this is why we're here. I got the best shoes on planet Earth. The Mario Brother 3s. <laughs> <laughs> Why did those become a thing? Because we're lemmings. Somebody wore them. We made a video. They went up in price. They went down in price. I wasn't buying them at their peak. They went crazy down. But I just wore them because I thought it would get me attention, which I'm addicted to. You are. That's why I did it. Then where are and these, it works. Where are these swollen nah. pussy shoes? <laughs> <laughs> wear them. 
You I can't have my toes separated. I like yeah. my toes to be together. No. I don't it like don't that segregated like toe it, situation. It, it don't look like it split it. it the big toe. It <laughs> looks like it split it. <laughs> that's the crazy part. The, then that's not even legal. You can't. The big toe. He'd be on his own. He's strong. He can go out there in the world like and this? look. What is it? I feel like? like he goes two three zone. Two three like it look like a two three zone. Oh, you talking about? But no, which no which like two, this three? basically. Oh, big yeah. toe, big toe, middle toe. The other three is on their own. This is in the Bible. You're not supposed to do this. It can't be right. <laughs> it's got to be, you know, something, at least in the Torah. This can't be right. They are ugly. They look very Mark of the Beast. Like, <laughs> like I know everybody worry about people getting chips implanted in them. I think it's the shoes. These ugly <laughs> shoes. That's how the devil going to know you. Have you looked in the mirror and thought you were seeing wrinkles mm. on your face? Yeah, I have. You have? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, this morning. Listen, a lot of people have been there. So I want to give y'all some information that you might not know. Hi, hyaluronic, that's what it's called. I was about, I always want to add a D to that. Hyaluronic acid decreases with age. I didn't even know hyaluronic acid was something we produced. I always thought it was something that they just put on your skin. It's something that's supposed to be in your body, right? There's a gradual loss of hyaluronic acid in the skin as we age. And over time, the skin becomes thinner drier and more prone to wrinkles so let me tell you when it comes to my skin care uh, regimen a lot of times it is hard for me to add things that I'm <clears throat> just having to like plop on my face so actually having a supplement that is uh, by Ritual which is a company that I love for my multivitamin um, they have uh, Hyacera which is a way that you can add hyaluronic acid to your daily skincare routine without having to do it in the way that most people, because you're putting it in your body. Hyacera is a once daily support supplement with two clinically proven ingredients, Ceratec and Hyabest to reduce wrinkles and fine lines. In a clinical study done by an independent research lab, Ceratec, Proved to help reduce wrinkles and fine lines in 90 days. In a clinical study done by the supplier, High Best, or Higher Best, significantly, significantly improved skin luster and suppleness compared with the baseline after 90 days. Enhance your skincare routine from the inside out with one daily capsule with a soothing <sighs> vanilla scent. Made traceable, non GMO, vegan, gluten free, soy free, no artificial colorants. And it's third party tested. Reduce wrinkles without compromising on clean science. Highest Zero from Ritual is a skin supplement you can you that you can actually trust. Ritual is offering our listeners 30% off during your first month. Visit ritual.com slash crew with a K. Do it okay. To start Ritual, add Hyacera Zero to your lineup today. And then after you get yourself looking good, how about you get some good candidates? Huh? With indeed, that's who I'm talking about. There's two sides to every story, but if you want to, to hire great talent for your business faster, there's just one way to do it. You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. They've streamlined hiring the with the powerful tools that find you match candidates. I did this when I was looking for my assistant a few years ago. They gave me about 40 very qualified that fit all the things I needed, had all the skill sets I needed within. I, it was so fast. I was almost like, wait, is this even real? But I was looking over people's resumes and it was just like, yeah, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I don't know how else that would have happened so quickly and so efficiently because I was a one man team at the time. Uh, Indeed is an unbelievable, powerful hiring platform, delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest 2019. Join more than three million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your post at Indeed.com slash HTT. HTT. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash HTT. HTT. Just go to Indeed.com slash HTT. HTT. And support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash HTT. HTT. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Uh... 
Shout out to our sponsors. Thank you so much. I realize reading in sunglasses is not a good idea for me. <laughs> Feels like I have cataracts. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Kevin, have you ever stole from a chick you were dating? No. I'm going to ask Melissa. I'm be like, Melissa, Kevin, you stole her car. You were driving around she town. Let me, she let me have her. She let me drive her car. That's what that dude track. said. She let me have the shoes. They they were out. People were saying it's the, the mustache should have given him away. He had the swiper, no swiping mustache. Mm-hmm. First of all, he looked like the fox. He uh, said, par- oh, man. <laughs> yes, you better have that voice. Can you imagine not only getting caught, but now your whole being is plastered on the internet for everybody to see? Your girlfriend now knows that you're cheating. Now knows that you're cheating? Yeah. One of the girlfriends, like, like, what's worse? The fact that you cheated on me or that the tabbies that I wanted, you have to give back. I don't already... have any questions. It they were used. That's I already. Say. When I feel somebody else's hot ass feet and bending them, I'm going to be like, I didn't need these ugly shoes I to begin with. I found these at the thrift store. What? <laughs> People, what? Yeah. And did they hug in that video when they exchanged the shoes? I didn't see a hug. Okay, I can't remember. I can't. Uh, my brain is not really remembering much now. It's she awesome. got two sexes and she lost the shoes. They, they, oh, yeah, they had sex that night and then sex in the morning. I, that, my thing is he must have been smashing and just like, man, I got to steal those That's tabbies. what he was looking at the entire time. You like that? Just... He's like, I like those. You see all that <laughs> that little cut hoof section is in there? Yes, he's just, this porn S- shoes, they look like swollen coochie. He's like, swollen. This plus those, as <laughs> soon as I'm done with this coochie, I'm going to get the coochie threes. <laughs> like he had to eyeball the tabbies while he was within the cheeks. I wonder if it he was saw, betwixt the cheeks. And saw he tabbies a, in her profile picture and was like, that's the woman. She's the one. Yeah. That's the one I'm going to get. Now, women, when y'all let men in your house to give you the sex, put your shoes in a safe. Yeah. Because <laughs> apparently her, her uh, shoes were like on like a <clears throat> like a shoe rack. And she only had five pair of shoes. <laughs> you think she won't notice? That's one. She had five <laughs> pair of shoes. <laughs> Nigga, she going to notice the flats are gone. <laughs> I don't get it. And also taking her. Who doesn't have Spotify? I don't. Spotify is free. I, I, I did. Well, I don't have it on my phone either. But the point is, <laughs> I don't. If I'm going to show you a playlist, mm-hmm. how would why you? would I need to? Why would I not have? If I made a Spotify playlist, I would have Spotify. But deleting your number, first of all, it's crazy how technology works. He goes and deletes his number. Nobody memorizes numbers nowadays. And deletes his tinge. Tinge was a hinge or twinder. Twinder. Twin. Come on, come on. Hey, I got. Hey, I can't hey. come, Father God. Let him Jesus. use you, can. Yeah, you got a number Loose. sheet in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tender. Hey, tender, twinder, yeah. tender. So deleting the match and and deleting your phone number, that nigga disappeared. He's like, she had to take to the digital streets to find him after that. First of all, I don't trust nobody with my phone. Mm. I don't trust any. This is so funny. There was something we were doing. Oh, when we were on tour, um, there were people who didn't have like card the right their card wasn't being read or something mm-hmm. so i gave them the option to cash at me and this one dude was like i i can search for he was trying to do something and uh marcus was like somebody wants to take a picture with me i said N- no i'm going to watch this man with my phone <laughs> so that i can take it back from him because if he takes my money I'm going to fight him in the Cash up himself money? Yeah, because that's what people do. That's what people do. Because I was like, "Uh uh-uh, I'll do the same thing when I'm waiting for the payment to come through. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, don't move with that merch. I need to see the thing (laughs) pop up on my phone. I need to hear the the coin drop. (laughs) If I don't hear the coin drop, give me back the merch. Drop the merch. (laughs) People are shysty like that, though. People will do stuff with, so I don't, even when... Uh, there was another time where we were at the airport and I was wanting food and the woman was supposed to ring me out wasn't there. So the hostess was like, she was like, oh, you give me the payment. And when she comes out, I will pay her. When I tell you <clears throat> she had my card and this was the entire time. Have you seen that that meme of the black girl looking at the phone where she's like. <laughs> yes. That's what you look Yes. Because like. I was like, people is. <laughs> People are shysty. They will take, and people are also really good at what they do when they're scammers. Yeah. One thousand, that, that's an amazing play he ran. Like, he thought of everything. I was like, this is, I think most people, maybe like if post coital, if you, if you have, if you had a great sex, mm. 
you're not thinking clear. If he just dropped peen off and he's like, yeah, let me show you this playlist. And door, you're like, door service. Yeah. Little postcodal residual aura. You're like, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not thinking clearly. Show me the playlist. And he's just like, swipey swipe. And them shoes is stolen. <laughs> like, when did he get the shoes, Angel? Listen, I don't know. Well, I know for me, she I, have to, I have to sit on the toilet for a little bit after. Got to pee. Got to keep, keep flush the system out, yeah. you know? So that would have been a prime time you gotta to get, you gotta rob nut me it blind. In. That, exactly. You get nutted in. Got to get that nut up out you. Got to. So that's the prime opportunity. He could have stole all my shoes and my whole phone. <laughs> he wouldn't have to erase that. Just... Turn the phone off and take off the find my find my stuff. You know what I'm saying? How you can find, tear that off? He could have stole everything out of my apartment because I got to sit on that toilet for a little bit. They never do that in porn, do they? What? They never show women going pee after. No, they, nobody's interested after the night. <laughs> nobody's nobody, teaching nobody, the people how to like, prevent you. Well, what happens after that? Is it in the director's cut? <laughs> What is she using? Is she using like a bad wipe? Imagine her porn and the girl is just like, man, I'm just, she's just peeing like a, a realistic porn. She's just peeing on her. She's just sitting on the toilet mm -hmm. peeing and scrolling through yeah. TikTok. Yeah, 30 for 30 on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't let it. Don't let it cause a movement. I'm going to be in here for a while. So <laughs> you might want to cut someone else's footage while I'll be here. All right. This next story. I feel really good about, and for this reason, I didn't see this in the Patreon, okay? Uh, I do want to shout out real quick. Um, shoot, who, who put the Tabby story in? Uh, dang, I deleted it. My bad. Well, I wanted to what? share this with people. What? Um, this I'm story. So confused. Okay, tell I me. want to shout out who put the Tabby story in there, but I- Oh, I, you deleted it. I deleted the person thing. Thank you, Tabby story person. Uh, actually, I forgot I can undo it. Uh, Adrian Kershaw. Adrian, oh. that's who I was going to say. <laughs> so are you familiar with the, are you guys familiar? I know you read the story. Uh, Supreme, the shirt, yes. streetwear brand. Okay. So P Supreme had a creative director. Yes, black named man. Named Tremaine Emery, who's a black man. Yeah. So I see this story floating around the internet the other day. It's like the creative director for Supreme uh, resigned. Resigned. He's and I was like, oh, I didn't even know it was black at the time. Uh -huh. So I click on this thing and I'm like, oh, snap, he's black. I wonder why. So wonder I why go, he's black or wonder no, no, I wonder why he resigned. <laughs> why is he black? <laughs> what did this happen? <laughs> well, interesting so, choice. Supreme, if you're unaware, it's a streetwear brand and uh the stuff is wildly expensive. Yes. It just a lot, often says the word Supreme or the do like Supreme collabs with Nike or whatever, right? Very expensive stuff on go on uh StockX, stuff like that. Primarily white kids and Sneakerheads, but mostly white kids. Their you all have seen it. It's usually if it's on a white tee, it is a red block with the letters Supreme in white yeah. inside of it. Very plain script. Stand yeah. Serif. Go ahead. Huh. So I was up in the middle of the night, <laughs> and I saw that he resigned, and he cited some racial, uh, like he basically said it was racism. I'm gonna. It's systematic. I'm going to read the whole thing because I'm sorry. I need you to read his words. So the Tuesday after I resigned, James Jebby pulled up to my crib. The text above, uh, he posted a text where he talked about why I resigned. The head of HR was there and a woman from VF was listening on Zoom. James admitted that he should have talked to me about canceling the image from the Jaffa collab because one of the few black employees who ironically has quit Supreme before I did partially because of, this, because of his treatment due to systemic issues by Supreme. His words, not mine. And the design studio didn't think that we should be putting out this collab because of the depiction of black men being hung and the free slave Gordon pictured with whip lashes on his back. If you're not familiar with this picture, it might, might be the most famous picture from slavery. Mm -hmm. It's the Will Smith movie, um, Emancipation. Emancipation. It's the picture that he did. You, you probably have seen it. It's all the back, black guy has his back turned and all the, lashes, all the lashes and like keloid scars uh -huh. are on his back. That's the image that he's talking about. Right. Okay. That's what he wanted to have on a Supreme shirt Love and Supreme, the brand was like no. canceled that drop. That's what without he's referencing telling him. without telling him. Okay. Uh, James agreed. There should have been discourse about the project with me being that I was the creative director and I'm black Supreme statements in the BOF article is a lie to hide the systemic racism that lies deep within Supreme and almost all white owned corporation. I wanted to work with Supreme to change these things. Instead, I told, I was instead I, Oh, he said, yeah. I told, but I think he meant I was told. Yeah. 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 Instead, I 
was told I was racially charged emotionally and using the wrong form by bringing up systemic racism in a meeting when I was asked if we should work with black female artists will this Jaffa project was secretly shut down without anyone talking to me. That's why I resigned. James agreed with all my points and said he's going to change Supreme. He's got to stand on what he said to me and the whole C-suite and the head of design got to stand on what was said. He tags a few people. I got a full clip of receipts. Plus, you could just talk to the other people of color that work in the design studio about their experience. As it is a valid one, as it is as valid as mine, I just have a platform to speak that most of people, most of people of color in America don't have. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to defend Supreme. And I'm sure they are full of systemic racism. However, I am glad, and a lot of people are as well, that they decided not to do a Supreme collab with that image. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, that would have been a horrible, <laughs> horrible idea. That would have been mm -hmm. worse than H&M Gate. That would have been worse than... One thousand percent you're you are gonna have white kids uh -huh. wearing a in slave in line in line because yeah, it's gonna kids. go the white kids will wear it. crazy yes the kids who buy supreme buy any collab that's why it's so expensive it doesn't really matter whether it's good or not they had like a red brick phone kind of like these boots like some people will buy it because just because it's supreme uh don't want to side with the Waihites. But somebody listened to the black person who was like, hey, 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 I know I'm not the head of creative over here, but I am black. This is not going to end well. Why would you think that a Supreme collab with a slave? Are you going to put the Supreme over, over him? <laughs> is he going to be built face? into a lash? Are you gonna do? You're gonna make lynching shirts? I, I, it is almost now, mind you. I've had because Angel went through a very, very, very pro, pro black era of her life. I had a shirt with a lynching on it that had all of the information. It used to make white people so uncomfortable. Oh, please tell me more about this time in your life. Oh my God! It had a lynching and all the white people that took a picture with the lynching. Yes, because they used to commodify lynching. Oh hell yeah! And it was like history. Something I can't remember the brand. It was like never forget our history or something like that. I know I'm messing up the brand name, but it was something like that. And it would be so it was satisfying to see white people to like they would be like, hey, age. <laughs> I was like, yes. No, no, that's your people, ain't it? Exactly. Y'all want to go to the cookout? This is what y'all used to do. Exactly. I was like, uh huh. I would need y'all to understand in 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 these years because no, it was two thousands by that time. But I was like, in in these times yeah. when pictures were still able to be taken, this is what was happening. They made postcards out of those. However, this was a very very black owned. Like you could only get these at black festivals. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. So the that's creation the of the shirt, yeah. whether you should commodify that to make a point, if a black owned business is doing that, that's a separate conversation. No, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Choosing to wear that. I love that you did that. That's hilarious. Oh, love all the cringe. time. They would be so just like, oh, oh no, this is a part of we doing history facts. <laughs> I got a fact for you, but the. If you are one of the few black people at a company, that doesn't make sense to do it at that company. Not a brand that's not black owned, whose audience is not primarily black people. I'm looking at the Patreon chat. A lot of people are like, what is Supreme? I, I, don't, I only know about Supreme because I worked at All Def. If I didn't spend four years of my life at All Def, I wouldn't even know about all these streetwear brands. Supreme, I Kith, know how I know about that. Undefeat, well, undefeated to hear wears, but all of that stuff they hip me to. The average person who's not into LA streetwear probably doesn't even know what Supreme is. I guarantee you, they would have known if this would have came out. So, uh, two things can be true. I think Supreme probably is systemically racist, and I think they probably did a good job by pulling this campaign. But I wonder why they just didn't say something to him. Like, nigga, is you crazy? <laughs> nigga, is you crazy? This not going to work. This is not. It I was so funny because the way he typed it out, I think he thought, from, from my attention, <laughs> I think he thought black people was going to get with them. And in his comments, people were like, wait, you was going to do what? 
<laughs> you was finna put slaves on a Supreme shirt. What? Why would you? No, no. They shouldn't have done that. That's a terrible yeah, idea. No, you, you were going to bring down the whole brand. You know this, right? <laughs> the whole brand was going to come down from this. Because what exactly are they? What? Because it's not like they're going to come with any education with the imagery. No. And they would have made a killing. No pun intended. But they would have sold well because everything they do sells. And also, these white kids is different. These out here. Yes. The white people I was wearing my uh, lynching shirt around, they my age. They wouldn't be caught dead wearing something right. like that. These little white babies would be like, these yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's and then if you're in Florida, they're going to be like, that. he wasn't a slave because slavery wasn't a, it didn't even exist. So they're going to be like, I don't even know why this is a problem. Like, First of all, he was trespassing on the picnic. <laughs> Those he wasn't supposed to be there. Those aren't even those aren't even lashes. That's an allergic reaction to belts. To wheat. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't know what he thought the impacts would be, and if you and especially this is what really doesn't make any sense. If you feel like this con uh, company is has a lot of systemic problems, especially racial systemic problems, yeah. <clears throat> why do a project? A artistic project that does not speak to that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you are jumping. We This is, you saying that they need a class in racism 101, and you jumped to five, the, the honors 505 class. Like, S Supreme doesn't have the brand <laughs> that makes people think, oh, yes, when they take their marketing, that when they use their money, it goes towards black people. It goes towards under... Uh, privileged and underfunded communities. No, these are just white people making shirts for white people. Yes. So what? I don't understand what his point was going to be. What was he trying? I want him to type out another long ass message for us to read. <laughs> what was his creative direction? What was the purpose behind? 1000%. I, 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 I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, There's so many other black things he could have did that would have been fire. Yes. Just, a painting of a pretty black woman, a black boy. He said, let's go to let's do a, a lynching, a lynching and the James Gordon. You know how powerful it would have been, though, to have a, a picture of a gorgeous black boy on a shirt and all these white boys wearing it. Now, that's some powerful shit right there. Yeah. Uh, one that don't even play basketball. Just a pretty black boy. And he said, uh-uh, let's go back to the, let's go back to Lynch. Oh, man. All right, let's just do this next ad. I'm sorry, Angel. There's I was about to go. Well, you know, as a parent. <laughs> I didn't know if you showed He Josh didn't, Lynch. but I knew I felt it, and I can see you're tired. I'm exhausted. Get over it, Kevin. I am. We're rock stars. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that sounded more like a banjo. Don't worry, I'm going to work on it. An electric banjo? <laughs> As a parent, I basically have <laughs> negative time, okay? Negative uh, time in a day. <laughs> but I always knew investing for me and my children was important, but I don't have the time to manage a portfolio. What? Or the money to pay someone to do it for me. Not going to do it, okay? That's why I love Acorns, okay? Because it's an easy way to get started. And I can just set up my contributions to deposit automatically on a monthly basis. And it's fun to see the potential growth over time. Okay, truly, investing can be extremely complex to do. And um, when you are a novice like myself, I haven't, the last time I took investing seriously, I think I was in middle school. That's when I was learning about stocks. A lot has changed since then. I really don't have the time to sit here and be like, okay, let me research all of this, figure out. Acorns makes it so that you can still be in the game of investing and making sure that your um, your risk, you stay within your risk, thresh, uh, thresh, how you say it? Threshold. threshold. Thank you. Threshold. threshold. Um, and that you have a diverse portfolio. So I also want to let you all know this. This is a paid testimonial and may not be representative of all clients. Compensation provides an incentive to positively promote Acorns. View important disclosures at acorns.com slash SK. SK. Investment advisory services offered by acorns.com LLC 
in SEC Registered Investment Advisor, brokerage services provided by Acorn Securities, LLC, and SEC Registered Broker Dealer and member F-I-N-R-A slash S-I-P-C. Investment advisory services offered by Acorns Advisory, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor, brokerage service provided by Acorn Securities, LLC, an SEC registered broker dealer and member F-I-N-R-A S-I-P-C. For more information, visit acorns.com. Real quick inside. I don't think this is the full ad. I don't think it is either. I felt like the last third section was not. Because I had to do this one. This is going to cause an argument. There's no a call to action. Let me let me find my call to action from uh, so that you'll have it and um, you can just throw it in there so it makes sense. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Hold on one second. I was like, where the hell? Yeah, it just ended in the action? disclosures. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, this is not right. Well, Here we, we go. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, let me find it. I'm almost there. I have the email. I'm just trying to. Oh, oh, okay. All right, here we go. So this is why I'm excited that Acorns is a sponsor of today's today's podcast. Okay, so there's no expertise required. Required investments are automatically put into diversified portfolios based on your risk tolerance. And Acorns even has exclusive financial education content for your whole family, which is my favorite part. The sooner you start investing, the more chance your money has to grow over time from Acorns. Mighty Oaks do grow. Head to acorns.com slash SK SK. to to download Acorns to start saving and investing for your future today. Copy. (laughs) All right. Real quick, before we get to this last door, I just want to shout out Dion Sanders. Colorado beat TCU. Uh, Jenny Jordan yeah, wanted yeah, yeah. to talk, talk about this. Uh, Shador Sanders, Deion Sun, threw for like 500 yards. They beat TSU, TCU, who played, well, they didn't really play in the national championship. They were there, Georgia. though. They went. They, they, went to, they got an L.A. trip. Yeah, they went to the national championship. Georgia played. Uh, but TCU is perennially, perennial, per, Hey, every year, hey, listen. Same for me. Kevin. Every year, it's okay. <laughs> every year, TCU puts out a pretty good team. A lot of people thought TCU was going to go. I mean, Colorado was going to go zero and six. They were talking trash. Dion can't do it. Four receivers had over a hundred yards receiving, which I don't think I've ever seen in one game. Travis Hunter played a hundred and ten snaps. He played receiver and corner. He caught a hundred yards. He had a pick on a play that I. I it was just an amazing play. And Dion talked his trash. Yes, he did. He talked. That yes, he did. Talk. It's funny because he was like talking to a reporter, like you don't believe, and I'm like, reporters, they they don't have to yeah. believe. They they post the report. Yeah, they supposed to give their opinion. But he was like, next question. It was great, and I would have done it. Mm-hmm. But the reporters don't have to believe. The team needs to believe. The mm-hmm. fans need to believe. The coaching staff, but the reporters don't need to believe. Uh, but anyway, it was great. Uh, so I just wanted to say that because that's pretty. He dope. talked his stuff. He said he it did. don't matter what y'all. He said y'all been. I've been him is what he said. He did. I said now I love that. Now come on, Hemothy. Hemothy, slim him. All right. This next story is god awful, but many other Patreon people wanted us to talk about it. Quinn, shout out to you. Hey Quinn. There's a lady who got hit in the face by a brick. Oh, it broke. From a my man who, uh. She rejected his, or she didn't give him her number. Right. He wanted her number. She didn't give it to him. And he hit her in the face with a brick. And there were men there who witnessed it and did nothing as this man drove off and her face began to swell. Her face, it, it was so, I am not even joking. I blocked the person on Twitter who posted it because I couldn't take seeing that image anymore. I I just, I tried to mute that. It was Horrific. I didn't even It looked like something out of a cartoon. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't know what had happened. I saw her face. And I saw, you know, it was the I think right after the incident and she's kind of like yelling, I can see the men behind her. So I initially didn't know what had happened. I was like, "Oh, this woman has like a some sort of face deformity." And then mm-hmm. when I read, I think in the caption what had happened, and I started doing the swiping over to like see the other videos. I didn't listen to any of them because yeah. I was so heartbroken at how she looked and that it was from a brick to the side of her face 
by a, a nigga who couldn't get a number. I've seen a lot of women say that they don't, um, that they do give out their numbers or to like a avoid. Google number. And then they just like block the person later. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they used to give out fake numbers. This is just, this conversation revived some of these thoughts mm -hmm. um, that they used to give out the fake number. But a lot of times apparently men will call you right then yeah. and see if their number um, pops up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I just want to say this, right? As a father, sometimes I'm just like, I, I mean, you be seeing stuff like this and I'd be like, I, I, I got to do a better job with my kids. That's why I had right. so many boys to help flush out these nasty roaches of men that we got. I'm doing this for y'all. You put four in the world. Listen, I, this is all I can do. Listen, hey. <laughs> you did your part, Angel. That's all I can do. I still got to rap. I got to <laughs> do jokes. I need time to be standing up. I can't just be on my back all the time on my stomach. Continue, Kevin. Having children or making them. Yes. Okay. I got to get up and do stuff. I got to work. Got to pay for these kids. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, two things I want to say. Uh, somebody on Twitter said this, and I agree. Men are dangerous. They are. To other men, but especially to women. Mm -hmm. If I were a woman, keep that thing on you. Whatever that thing is. Listen. A pistol. Pistol, pistol, pistol. Pop, pop, pop. A knife, a brass knuckles, mm -hmm. a pepper spray. Yeah. And also men are scary, right? Uh, I don't know why the men did not help the woman. Because they are, go ahead. I just hope that if Kevin Fredericks was there, like I'd be wondering how I would respond in situations. I just hope, and I'm not a violent person per se, but I hope I would not stand idly by and allow that to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It, <clears throat> I feel like every woman needs to take defense classes. I actually need to re up because it's been too long because it's a shame, but I understand everybody, we all trying to, we all trying to just survive and get out of the situations as safely as possible. Mm -hmm. And so I understand why some people's tactic is, let me just give this nigga my number so that I don't have to worry about him being aggressive towards me. Yeah. Right. However, we also should also give ourselves the tools to be able to put a nigga on his back and him not get up if, if necessary at the same time. Yeah. Um, because there's nothing worse than, living in fear I because I'm older I'm a little more skittish than what I used to be when I was younger I really tried to have all the tools necessary that if I had to physically defend myself against a man that mm -hmm. I gave myself the best odds if yeah. that was if that yeah. was the case so in this case I'm sure she thought because because if a nigga's saying he can take rejection you know what I'm saying if he's saying he can take rejection of any form of if you ask a woman for her number. But some of these niggas ain't well. And we need to be in a place where we can make sure he don't get back up if yeah. necessary. Yeah. And I'm looking in the chat. Apparently, there's more to this story. And this woman apparently might have been uh, asking him to hit her. These are alleged things that I'm seeing live. She might have been a known uh, troublemaker. This is what I'm seeing. This is not things that I knew of or saw. Uh, even if that were true. You okay, Liz? It's better laugh. But. No. Oh. Uh, if she's a known troublemaker, so so let her get hit in the head with a brick. People will always find a way to blame a woman, a black woman, at that. That's crazy. So let her get hit in the head with a brick. Always. Because a woman said it. Because if she said say hit me. You oh, well, she said hit me. Oh, so there's stop. nothing. Just file said. Okay, let me go grab a brick. Yeah, real let quick. her get hit in the head. Like you can die. Yes. Blunt force trauma. That's enough to kill you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't. The people are dumb. And people will come up with any reason not to defend a black woman. I, it, it does not matter. People will always come up with a way. Ain't no reason. Unless she just hit him with a brick. Or right. hit her mom. Hit his mama with a brick. Right. Hit his daughter with a brick. Should there have been a brick in his hand to hit her? 
Mm-hmm. And it doesn't sound like any of those were the scenario. I don't no. think that his mama was there getting busted upside the head by her with a brick, nor his child. I agree. So I, I, I'm confused on why that's even a part of the conversation because people are stupid. <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't. I do stupid. not get it. I don't get it. And that's the only reason why I had security, right? Yeah. Not because I honestly thought anything bad was going to happen, but because niggas is out here being crazy. And I'm not up on my self-defense. Don't worry. I'm still going to have security even when I do get up on my self-defense. But if niggas is hitting folks with bricks and think that it's justifiable <laughs> and it's not... <laughs> and it's not literally in t- retaliation of getting hit by a brick, then I can already tell people's logic ain't right in the right. world. And you can't, it, it only takes one time to get caught slipping for your life to be dramatically altered forever. You don't have yeah. to get caught slipping all the time. Yeah. One time. Yeah. It could be over. Yeah. For you. The women are saying they wouldn't have their husband help, risk their husband to help another woman. and risk lose. Listen, I also understand that. There are certain situations that Marcus used to try to be Captain Save a Ho, and I'd be like, wait, wait, no. We're going to call the police from right here. We're going to call the police from right here because I don't know what that man got on him. Right. Let me tell you, if that man do something to him, she going to wish we would have let him beat her ass. Because <laughs> she going to be dead by my hands. I was about to say, because you might just wake up dead. You going to wake up dead <laughs> after that. <laughs> wake up dead is such a funny thing. But people it's a shame. I, People always think that doing something is just, well, now you fighting the nigga. Sometimes we can help de-escalate stuff without having to put ourselves in physical harm's way. Yes. People somehow always have the means to pull out their camera. 100%. But that's but the, the, that's the end of the, it's either pull out the camera or you a weak ass, you know, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are other things that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> There's other options. There are. All right. I want to end on a lighter note before we go to the bottom of the beautiful. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, Angel. Uh, shout out Jessica Williams from the Patreon who suggested this. And Jenny Jordan. YSL Polo. That's a. Who, that's a. A disease? No, no. YSL Polo is a. I don't know I'm what he is. Of polio. He is. I think he's polio. YSL is uh, the rappers. Think, There's a group of them. There's a gaggle. YSL Polio is a hilarious name for a rapper from the 18th century. Listen, I was like, oh, they we got something else, y'all. COVID is over. We got YSL Polo coming up. But he's a, I was like, it's either clothing, a disease, or a rapper. And I went with disease first. But YSL rapper is in. Polio? <laughs> it's, it's great. How many of them babies is there? There is a lot of them YSLs. Why so many? Is that what? a gang? Are they the slime people, Josh? Allegedly. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Angel, you are aging before, the, not even by day by day, from the beginning of this podcast to the end of this. I know you're are not they, talking. Are, are they old. the slimes? Joshua? You old ass, sleepy ass nigga. You are getting old. Your teeth are going to fall out here. <laughs> Where is the last ad? <laughs> Angel, Listen, you, you, have, you are now five foot two. You have hunched over so we much. We had three. Let me tell you about my weekend. <laughs> we had three shows in three cities. I didn't route God this one. God is good, one. Kev. God is good. I didn't route this. L.A. to Atlanta. New Orleans. New Orleans show that night. New Orleans to Phoenix, which is Pacific time zone. Yes, it is. Phoenix show that night. <laughs> Phoenix back to Dallas, Oh, which is back ugly. to Central time. Four o'clock in the morning, Dallas to LA. LA. Sleep. We landed at 7 a.m. Yes. And then y'all had to go to see the Beyonce. Beyonce. So that, yeah, yeah. That sounds like, yeah. Fun. Till 1 30. Then I woke up at 5 and walked four miles. How far was y'all's car? Was it right outside? No. We, we had to walk. I had to watch a, a walk a country mile. We had to walk to the liquor store? To, no, out of so the state. To get to, get to my. <laughs> 
Africa picked and, me yeah, up. I, I know. We'd, we'd walk far. We I said, walk. "Is why is this happening to they me? They don't let the cars in. Brisha's vehicle never left. I said, we got to figure My out. My car whatever. never left either. No, no, no. Oh, never it, left the drop off? Yeah, it was near where the ambulances were. Oh, but the celebrity people, they their roles are well, different. We got to be celebrity people. I need people. to be in there. There were so many sprinters coming in from underneath. I was like, why? I want to I want to go that. where they are. And I want to be that, where the sprinters are. It was these are. two white women. They were like, does anybody have a portable charger? Does anybody? <laughs> and I was like, uh... All right, I said y'all come here, and they were like, "Oh, you gave him some juice." I gave him some Angel juice. Angel said, then, "Charge it in front of my eyes, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, unplug it at five percent." I had the block in my hand, and then they were and like, "You getting to seven percent?" Listen, listen, right? No, they were like, "Do you have an Uber?" I said, "No, I have car service. My car is on the way." And they were like, "Would it be possible?" If you could just drive us out of this section, maybe we'll be able to get an Uber if we're not here. I said, absolutely not. So y'all get Is this juice. You, you was me and that rows. woman in the airport. <laughs> Can I ride with y'all to Houston? I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I said it to their face. <laughs> I said, absolutely, absolutely not. I said, so y'all go ahead and get the juice while you can. So you can end up on underreported. Yeah, I said, my <laughs> husband would kill me. And when Africa pulled Matter of fact, you don't get no more juice Africa, just for asking that question. Africa pulled up, I yanked that cord up out of there. What the hell? Who do I'm not saving you? I Entitlement had, is a disease, man. I would <laughs> I would have had two phones fully charged and my block, and I'd have been like, I ain't got no charge. Because I, I don't know I what might like, happen in this world. What if there's a natural disaster? I don't give you 7%. I need it. Look, can I borrow your phone? I don't have a phone. Should have been more prepared. <laughs> Should have been more prepared. You knew you were going to a concert. Why you didn't bring a portable charger? I said. Or turn your phone off to the Wi-Fi. I said, y'all going to make it. Y'all going to need to start walking, though. Walk out. You got feet. <laughs> I really was just like, the audacity. They were like, me, 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 me. Do you think? Absolutely not. I don't think. I, and I won't. <laughs> I won't do it. No. No. Said, oh, people. <sighs> but I was by it, myself. <laughs> why is El Polio was fake and oh, crazy? Yes. We were talking about the disease. Come on. He uh, was why is El Polio? Looks like he fake and crazy in the uh, courthouse. Oh. So he could plead insanity. That's is what it looks like. He's on the Rico. He's on the Rico mm -hmm. with the slime mm -hmm. in them. Oh my god. Uh, he was like. That's what he was doing. Young Thug's lawyer was like, can you get him off? And you see the video, like you looking at him and he's just like, and I'm like, sir. It's not going to work. <laughs> Baby, it's not going to work. You got to spread peanut butter in your butt crack <laughs> and turn, <laughs> turn it around and lick it. That's the story from Training Day. The guy had peanut butter in his butt crack and he, he took it out and licked it. And they were like, Arkham Asylum. <laughs> get this man. He need to be with the Joker. Yeah. You're not uh, coming out. You're never coming out. You're going to wish you would have went to prison instead. Uh, all right. <laughs> what are we going to do with the bonus? Look. I'm beat. 95 I'm right beat. now. I'm I have Come nothing. Come on, Kevin. I, ha I have nothing. I feel cold. That's how tired I am. I'm telling you. I feel cold. I'm going to get you some oatmeal. That's how old you seem right now. When are we doing the bonus? Are we doing it on Friday? Friday, I got to shoot. I got to shoot on Thursday and Friday. So why are Saturday you asking me when we're doing the I didn't know what you had nigga. doing. I thought you had another performance in Australia. I do. I'm are you gone. Doing? Oh. No, I don't know. We'll Kevin, I'm out. not going nowhere. It's over. Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. What is Saturday? What's Saturday? Oh, I might need to check. Saturday or Wednesday. Let's figure it out. It's not Wednesday. It's so not Saturday. tomorrow? Okay, so that's so Saturday. God <laughs> I feel like I do have something on the knife, but I'll figure it out. All right. We love y'all. Thank y'all. Bye. Bye. Here's Here's another bang of fire, uh, with my boy Kev on stage, and that chick angel.